What is classed as a confined space? A confined space is a place which is substantially enclosed, though not always entirely, and where serious injury can occur from hazardous substances or conditions within the space or nearby, for example lack of oxygen. A confined space also has limited or restricted means for entry or exit and is not designed for continuous occupancy. Confined spaces include, but are not limited to, tanks, vessels, silos, storage bins, coppers, vaults, pits, manholes, tunnels, equipment housings, ductwork, pipelines, etc. What are the hazards in a confined space? Confined spaces may contain hazardous atmospheres, including insufficient oxygen, toxic, poisonous, air, or an explosive atmosphere. These spaces may also have physical hazards that may result, for example, in workers falling, being crushed or buried, or drowning. Confined space hazards can be categorized into two main types, atmospheric and physical. Atmospheric hazards Atmospheric hazards normally refer to the presence of hazardous gases in confined spaces. Atmospheric hazards can usually be defined into the following three categories. Oxygen deficiency. Toxic gases. Combustible gases. A gas detection device should be used prior to entry to check for the atmospheric contaminants. Even if it appears remote that any of these conditions exist, Standard procedures must be adopted and followed to prevent potential property damage, injury, illness or even death. Physical Hazards Whilst attention is drawn to the atmospheric hazards of confined spaces the majority of accidents that do occur are physical in nature that is from slips, trips and falls. The types of hazards which can exist in confined spaces which may lead to injury include Restricted or tight access Ladders Wet areas Deep pits Poor lighting Electricity in wet areas Lack of handrails Protrusions Poor housekeeping Lack of communication facilities Flooding Infection Lack of machine guarding Fire, explosion Excessive noise Lack of safety equipment and tools Lack of manpower Animals, snakes, rats, slips, trips and falls, hot, cold stress, drowning, suffocation, engulfment, general principles. If a safe alternative to working within a confined space cannot be found, the following steps must be taken prior to entry. Conduct risk assessment. Use lockout and tagout systems to isolate machinery and electrical power. Post warning signs. Check call personal protective equipment and respiratory protective equipment. Ensure safety equipment is on site, checked and ready for use. Purge, ventilate the confined space. Purging can be accomplished using steam, water, inert gas or air. Test the atmosphere for harmful gases, vapors with a gas detection device. Obtain entry and work permits. Ensure standby persons are present. Ensure an emergency response plan including plan exit routes, rescue team and emergency services is in place, standby person. In all situations of standby person, attendant must be posted outside the confined space when work is performed, and must remain on duty throughout the duration of the entry, unless relieved by another person of equivalent experience and training. This individual should be providing with the same level of protection worn by those within the confined space so that they can look into the vessel also. The specific duties of the standby person include the following. Maintain an accurate count of all persons within the confined space. Monitor activities inside and outside the confined space to determine whether it remains safe for the entrance to remain inside the confined space. Maintain effective and continuous contact with all the people working inside the space using radio, agreed hand signals, horn lights etc. Prevent entry of unauthorized persons into the confined space. Order evacuation of the confined space if necessary. Raise the alarm for rescue teams and emergency services. Assist with the rescue services as necessary without entering the confined space. 
the standby person should attempt to remove the entrance from the confined space using tripods, hoists and lifelines. They must never enter the confined space. Only properly trained and equipped emergency rescue personnel may enter the confined space to make a rescue. These are the important questions related to confined space. What is a confined space? Who has health and safety duties in relation to a confined space? What is required in managing risks? How to determine whether a space is a confined space? 2. Role of designers, manufacturers and suppliers. 3. How to identify the hazards. 4. How to assess the risks. 5. How to control the risks. 6. Emergency procedures. 7. How to review control measures.